Okay, this is gonna be a really weird video for me to make. Like, I'm really nervous, but then it's gotta happen, I've just gotta make it. As you can see by the title, this is about the cursed child. I really should have took this half price label off so I didn't look like a cheapskate, but I got it for a tenner. Just so you know, no spoilers in this until I say there's gonna be spoilers, and then if you've not read it, you can click off. But don't worry, I will pre warn you. Um, okay, right. And I'm, I'm gonna be flinging this book around a lot as well. Okay, so gonna start with the good things. For starters, how amazing that I grew up with Harry Potter, going to book releases and going to like the film releases and everything and getting so excited about new Harry Potter books. And then that hasn't happened for a long time, obviously, because the last book happened, the last film happened, and then there was a wait. Yes, in that wait we had Pottermore, we had a few little things, like I've got the book of Fantastic Beasts here. So we have had some stuff to keep our fandom happy, but an actual release that you can go and get and everyone's talking about it was amazing so I'm so glad it came out because like just to be able to go and experience something new in the Harry Potter world is great so I was so excited Um, yeah I was skeptical I've made a video about this in one of my Vida things I was skeptical to read it because I didn't want to not enjoy it I didn't want it to like ruin everything because I have enjoyed everything <laughs> that JK Rowling has ever given us I've, I've been really happy I'm like the biggest Harry Potter fan, we all know this. Um, I just, I, I love it. So, I was scared to read this, and for the right reason, because I didn't like it. <laughs> and I feel really weird saying it because, like, oh, I really wanted to like it. Like, so much of me was hoping that I'd love this book but I didn't. For starters, if you don't know anything about it, it's not actually a book, it's a script of a play. So I want to also say that I can imagine this is amazing on on stage. Like, the play is probably great, and I do want to see the play, and I'm really happy they released it as a script, but it's not doing it for me. <laughs> I think because it's a play, there's not a lot of detail in it, and what everyone likes about J.K. Rowling is her detail, like Harry Potter, all of them, they're so detailed, everything is explained so well, there's, everything's described like amazingly, so before the films even came out, as like a really young child, I was picturing all these things, it was amazing, and it was all described. Script, however, because it's acted out, you're supposed to be watching it, there's no description, there's no explanations, and I feel like it was rushed, like, so much happens in this book, like, in a short space of time, I read it within like literally a few hours because it's really easy to read, it's really quick, it's a play. So it goes through all these different things in like the shortest amount of time and everything goes from one thing to another to another to another and there's not a lot of description or explanation and you just feel like it's rushing through, like it's, I know it's really hard to explain but I just couldn't like comprehend how quickly things were happening in this book. I was just like, what the hell is going on? People who haven't read it, I do recommend you read it, especially if you're a Harry Potter fan, definitely, you have to read it. You can't just not read a new Harry Potter book script thing. You have to read it. Uh, but go into it with an open mind and imagine you're reading this but really, you're supposed to be watching it, okay? So now, if you've not read the play, you can leave now because I'm going to talk about it in detail. Um, I don't want to ruin it for you, so... Bye, if you don't want it to be spoiled. I'm gonna give you like four seconds to uh, click off. <laughs> Thank you, goodbye. Bye, my spoiler-free friends. Okay, I'm done, right. Here we go, here's my list. For starters, the concept of this story is ridiculous. <laughs> like, okay, right, fair enough, J.K. Rowling, she's a genius, and in her head this is probably amazing, and the play is probably amazing, but the concept of it, explained in this book, is so, like, they go back in time, not just back in time a few years, they don't go back in time and, like, save Harry's parents or anything, they go back in time for the most 
random reason in the world, Albus Potter, Albus Severus Potter is the protagonist of this play and he decides to go back in time to 20 years earlier, 20 something years earlier, to the Triwizard Tournament, as in book four, The Goblet of Fire, to save of anyone in the whole Harry Potter world, he could have saved Fred, Sirius, anyone, he saves Edward Cullen. <laughs> no, I'm joking, he goes back to save Cedric Diggory, like, I just, oh my god, I just can't get it into my head. So, okay, fair enough, that happens really random, was not expecting it, but okay. Time turners. Time turners shouldn't exist, okay? So, they existed in Prison of Azkaban. It's very confusing. It left loads and loads of, like, loopholes. Is that the way to describe it? Like, everyone in the world was like, oh, they have a timetable. Timetable? If they had a time turner, why didn't they just save Harry's parents? Blah, blah, blah. And all this was, like, open to discussion. So, because J.K. Rowling must have realised, like, no one's going to show up about this, the time turners got destroyed. After Prisoner of Azkaban, they weren't mentioned many times, they mentioned a couple of times, and then in the Battle of Hogwarts, they all got destroyed. Wow, okay, great, because now we don't have all these random loopholes, because time turning is just too complex. Like, I don't even want to think about time turning, because it just, it just stresses me out. Like, I get stressed, like, why is Fred dead? Why is Hedwig dead? if we could turn back time, and it really stresses me out, so I don't want to think about them. So this whole book is about time turners. <laughs> the Battle of Hogwarts, they destroyed the time turners, there is none left. But Hermione saved one, obviously. Okay, so Hermione saves, saves a time turner, there is one rogue time turner left. So skipping loads of this book, which I'll discuss in a minute, Towards the end, Lucius Malfoy's like, oh, by the way, I saved one too. And it's like, how many people saved a time turner after they were all destroyed? Okay, right. Anyway, that bothered me slightly. <laughs> Enough about time turning. You can think about that. It takes a lot to think about time turning. Whew, I'm getting stressed talking about this. <laughs> Other good thing here, just a positive note, it's really cool finding out things that happen to the characters like, oh my god, I was so excited when I found out like Jake, oh, not Jake here, really, what? Hermione was Minister for Magic, like oh, that is great, that is perfect, Hermione would be perfect. Granted, some of these things have probably been told in Pottermore, I have obviously read a lot of Pottermore, but like a long, long time ago, and a lot of facts, can't remember. Um, and then finding out like Ginny, she's like the editor, 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 she's like the editor of the sports pages, and in the Daily Prophet, like, and it's just great, like, all that is cool, finding out what happened, and it's great, everyone's always wanted that, we've always been like, JK Rowling, give us more. There was a part of this play <laughs> where Draco Malfoy has a son, obviously, Scorpius, and they're friends, Albus and Scorpius are friends, and <laughs> Scorpius says that there's a rumour going around that his mum couldn't have kids, and Draco was so upset about it that he wanted to carry on the, like, pure blood Malfoy name. So they went back in time. Voldemort impregnated Astoria, as in Malfoy's wife. And then they came back to the current day. So basically, there's a rumour that Scorpius is Voldemort's kid and not Draco's kid, which is just weird. Um, I literally was laughing so loud about that because imagine Voldemort having sex. No, I don't, I can't, I can't. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I was like, what, really? This is so comical. Turns out that was just a rumour, it wasn't true. But even worse than that, it turns out at the end of this that Voldemort did have a child, he did, with Bellatrix Lestrange. So, okay, they had a kid, Delphi, we'll come to her later, but Voldemort and Bellatrix Lestrange had a kid. So, this was somewhere between, I don't know, like, the last time she was seen in the Harry Potter series and the Battle of Hogwarts, 
Now, Bellatrix, like the Battle of Hogwarts, did not look like someone who's just carried a kid for nine months, birthed the child, got better, and then went back to her killing ways in the Battle of Hogwarts. Okay, saying this, this is me judging the film, like, I don't know, maybe in the books she still had all the baby weight, I don't know. But I cannot get my head around the fact that Bellatrix and Voldemort had a baby. <laughs> they had, this is me explaining how to have a baby. Okay, so they had a baby, that's just weird, I'm not right, and I just, I can't fathom it, I can't accept it, sorry, sorry. Moving to the baby, Delphi, Delphi, Delphi. No, I, I'm not keen on Delphi. Although I have heard, I have heard that Delphi in the actual play is a really good like character and in the play she's all great. But in the script, reading it, what on earth is this Delphi girl's problem with her life? Like, oh my god, I just, I don't like her as a character in the script, I'm sorry. I just, no. She's hanging around with two kids, like, no. No, just, no, read the book and then you'll agree that Delphi, no. Um, there is one part of this book where, oh my god, the sun is coming out. <sighs> um, <laughs> there's part of the book where Snape returns, because obviously they've travelled back in time, and Snape comes back. That is cute. That's cute, like, it's cute. Snape says to Alvis, no, Snape says to Scorpius, like, tell Alvis that I'm proud that he carries my name, blah blah blah. And it's cute to see Snape again, like, I was happy, but at the same time, I can't quite get into my head how Scorpius says to Snape, in, the, in like, after they've turned back time, so Snape doesn't know who Scorpius is, or like, anything like that. Scorpius says to him, oh, I'm from the future, um, you love Lily, you have to listen to me, blah blah blah, and Snape's like, oh yeah, okay, I believe you. No, what? <laughs> you wouldn't believe that, it's just a random kid starts saying stuff like, I know that you love Lily and you need to come with me, we need to talk about the future. No, no. Uh, there's another part which is slightly absurd. <laughs> I don't just want to tear this book apart because like I said I'm really glad it's come out, like I do recommend you read it and I did enjoy reading it and it was nice to like see what happened after Harry Potter. I just wish it was an, a novel and not a play. So there's part where like all these things that I'm mentioning could probably be explained really well and have really good reasoning if it was written as a book, but obviously it's not, so all of us little putter heads are trying to like get our heads around it like in the littlest amount of detail ever. And okay, so there is a part where Cedric Diggory is so humiliated and so embarrassed that he got like taken out of the Triwizard Cup. So, so embarrassed that he turns to a Death Eater and kills Neville. Surely, he's used to the embarrassment. He's Edward Cullen. No, I literally, how was he that humiliated? Cedric, like, I kind of feel like this is, it's a shame because Cedric was always seen as, like, that really nice Hufflepuff and... He got killed in the Triwizard Tournament and it was all so sad and everything. He died for no reason. It was like, kill the spare, Cedric said. And it was all really sad, but Cedric was a nice person. Everyone liked him. He's always in people's memories. Be like this, stomps all over Cedric's like legacy. And it's just a shame, like, Cedric's the nicest person. Then. They're saying, like, in an alternate universe, he'd be so embarrassed that he turns into a Death Eater and kills Neville. Out of anyone, he kills Neville. Like, I just don't think Cedric would have done that, and I feel like it's kind of, like, tarnished everyone's memory of Cedric. I think it's a bit mean. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like I said, if this was written as a full novel, maybe the whole humiliation Cedric thing would be explained more and in more thorough detail and I'd understand. I'm nearly there, don't worry. Now I have to come to what we're all waiting for, the trolley witch. What the hell happened there, Joe? <laughs> I honestly feel like Lewis Carroll wrote this part. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, it's just 
mad. Harry Potter, par, Harry Potter is not mad. It's it's great and it's all amazing and great. It all fits. It's all written in a certain style. And then it comes to this scene with the trolley witch. What on earth was going through the scriptwriter's minds? Once again, for the millionth time, in the play, this might be fantastic. It might look great. It might all make sense. But until I see the play, I can't quite get my head round the trolley witch. Essentially, Albus and Scorpius escape off the train, and in doing so, they got onto the roof of the train, where the trolley witch suddenly comes onto the roof of the train and is some form of alien robot thing. I don't even know. Like, what are you trying to explain that she is? I need to find it so I can read the description. She's like some form of mechanic spiky alien thing and starts throwing pumpkin pasties, which everyone knows are like famous snacks that people buy and suddenly they are bombs. They're explosive, explosive pumpkin pasties and she throws them at the kids and then apparently like the trolley witch's life is ruined because two students got off the train. Albus, the trolley witch. Scorpius points Albus in the right direction. Now he can see the trolley witch who approaches nonchalantly pushing her trolley on the roof. Okay. Anything from the trolley days? Pumpkin pasty? Blah 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 blah. She admits that she's 190 years old. Fair dues, that's fine. And how many million pumpkin pasties she's made? Fair enough. And then, next minute, she picks up a pumpkin pasty and she throws it. Like a grenade, it explodes. Never have I let anyone off this train before they reach their destination. Some have tried. Sirius Black and his cronies, Fred and George Weasley. All have failed because this train, it doesn't like people getting off. The trolley witch's hands transfigure into very sharp spikes. She smiles. Spikes. What? Okay. He looks at the approaching trolley witch, hair wild, her spikes particularly, particularly, particularly spiky. Can we just take a minute to think about that? No. Why is the trolley witch like an alien evil demon thing with spiky hands. I'm sure she's just an old woman that pushes a trolley. Okay, anyway, moving on, moving on. We're nearly done. Honestly, I swear down. Okay, a couple of last things. Teddy Lupin, where the hell is Teddy? Like, all of my life, I thought, oh my god, a book about Albus or James or whatever could be written and it could be beautiful, blah, blah, blah. Where is Teddy? Can we just... Remember that Teddy Lupin has no parents. Teddy Lupin is Harry's godson, just like Harry had no parents. Surely Teddy should be mentioned in this. Surely Teddy should be living with Harry or something. Like, I, I honestly, unless I skipped over and can't remember, I don't think he's even mentioned, which really bothers me, but okay. Um, couple of weird, like, people just aren't really, like, mentioned in this at all. Right, obviously it's a play, you have to fit a lot into it. Can't have a million characters on the screen, on the stage, so I understand. But, like, it did make me sad because I would have loved to have heard about, like, Teddy and, like, his story and everything. I don't know. So, after all of this, all of my ranting and stuff, like, I keep saying it, was good. And I do enjoy the fact that a Harry Potter, like story was, the eighth story was released and everything. I am happy about that. But I just feel like we've all read fanfics. We've all read like Draco and Harry fanfics and <laughs> Dramini fanfics, etc. Like, I feel like it could have been written by a teenage girl on Tumblr. And that really pains me to say because like, honestly, J.K. Rowling can do nothing wrong in my eyes. Like, I literally, I love her. She's, like, the queen of my life. <laughs> but this, I just feel like this isn't, like, unless we're, we, as, because I've watched a lot of videos similar to this, we, as, like, Harry Potter, people who have grown up alongside Harry and his friends, unless we're just missing something and we just can't grasp this difference in writing styles, I'm just... I can't be excited about it. I really need to see the play. The play could change everything, like, that I'm thinking. 
but I do feel like it was kind of written like a fan fiction. I can imagine a lot of fanfic will be written after this, Albus and Scorpius fanfic, like everyone is shipping them already. Actually, no, I saw one YouTube one YouTuber um, mention a very part of musical. I, I don't know if you've watched very part of musical, but oh my god, it's like the most hilarious thing. And it's like a musical about these people, star kids put on, blah blah blah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then there's no point in explaining. Uh, but you probably do because it's really famous. And it basically, it's it's very like similar to that because as this YouTuber that I was watching said, there is a line or a part of the book where Ron is off stage and someone's talking about him and he comes in and he's like, did somebody say Ron? And like, a very part of musical, the whole thing is like, did somebody say Harry? Like, I don't know, it's like, I just feel like it's comical, the whole script, the whole story is comical and that's not what I wanted. Also Ron, I'm sorry, but this is kind of like tarnished Ron for me too, because yeah, Ron's funny, like he's always been the funniest after Fred and George in the Harry Potter franchise, but he seems just like stupid in this, like he actually seems stupid, he's not taken seriously, I don't know, like it really like dumbifies Ron and I don't like it because Ron's not stupid and Ron like he's a really important character in Harry Potter and he was just made out to be like this joke. Um, okay, I, I'm I literally I am done running now. So all in all, I liked the script. It was good. I I liked it. I enjoyed reading it. But I personally wouldn't have done it that way. And there was a lot missing. There was a lot in it that I wasn't happy with. Generally, I liked it, but not as a follow one from the seven stories. It could have been beautiful, it could have been amazing, it could have been this huge, amazing story about Albus and his life and everything. But it was kind of like, he went to Hogwarts, blah, blah, blah. First year happened, second year happened, all in this like really quick succession because obviously it's a play so it would just be happening on stage in like fast motion but like I kind of want to know about them times I just I don't know I just wish it was more detailed that's all I can say so yeah all in all I feel like it was slightly rushed and um, parts of it seem a bit of a joke like I, f I do I don't want to but I do feel like the playwrights were kind of having a laugh when they did some of the stuff and when they wrote some of the lines and stuff like honestly I really do it's really sad if I do. Right, I'm done. Basically, thank you for releasing an ape story. It excited me, it's excited everyone. I'm really happy, but I just can't say I enjoyed it as much as I wanted to. Sorry. I still love Harry Potter. I, it's still really close to my heart and I will always love it, but... Oh, sad. It's disappointing. Uh, I'm gonna give it to my nan to read. She's a huge Harry Potter fan, see what she thinks of it then we can discuss it more. Uh, if you, whatever you thought, let me know in the comments. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you think it was a bit of a joke? Uh, I don't know. Let me know. I'd be really interested. And I will read all of your comments and we can have debates down in the comment box. So basically, still love Harry Potter. Always will. Always have done. And I love J.K. Rowling and literally, yeah. George Weasley, my friend, what did you think of this book? Yeah, I agree, no words.